Right, um, it's time for the next project. Um, this one's going to be more of an experimental project because there's going to be a lot of scratch building to go with this. Um, I'm probably going to be doing this kit over a, a few months when I can be bothered with it. It's not going to be a kit that I'm going to devote my next couple of months to. I'm going to be doing other builds while I'm doing this. So uh, it's time for the, the experimental build. Right, going over to my chest freezer, as you can see, it is the Revel 136 Offshore Power Boat. This is a very, very rare kit, this is. I mean, on eBay, this kit will set you back 30 to £50 pounds just by itself. I picked it up in a job lot with uh, an Apache helicopter, which you know I've already built, and a Spitfire kit, and a, a mate of mine had them off me. So, like I said, the job lot cost £25, pounds, so... I said, well, give me £8 each and you can have them, and I kept the boat for myself. Right, as you can see, you've got the two parts, you've got the upper part of the, the deck and the hull. You can see they're bigger than my hand, so this is quite a big kit. Not too bad at all. I'm, I'm liking the fact that I managed to get this so cheap. There's not that many sprues, to be honest. Not not too many sprues at all. You get the decals as well. This is like a, I mean, actually on the bottom of the this it says Miami Voice. It says Miami Voice uh, trademark to Universal whoever made it. So it is actually a Miami Voice boat. Now the instructions. I mean, even though the guy I bought it off on eBay said that um, all the bits are there, there was no instructions. So I had to download an instruction. Uh, manual off of uh, Revel's website. I mean, it looks fairly straightforward when you've got to build the engine compartment and everything, so it's not looking too bad as you can see. This looks, looks fairly easy, but I'm not going to be building it to that. I'm going to be doing something very special with this kit, again, hence the scratch building. So that's the uh, little out of box review, it's not much. It's definitely something. Like I said, I'm going to be doing something very special with this build. A lot of scratch building is going to be going on. And I will reveal what I'm going to do with this kit in due course. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. I'm about to start work on my uh, power boat. But you can see these two step lines that go all the way down the side of the hull. I'm going to have to sand those off. I don't want those at all. They're going to have to come off. Because there's going to be, a, there's going to be some decals that I'm going to put on here. And I don't want them stepped. So it's going to be both sides as you can see. And uh, you can see they are pretty deep lines. So those are going to have to be sanded off. Many hours of fun ahead. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. After about an hour and a half, give or take, of arm wrenching and thumb hurting sanding later, I've managed to get rid of that step. You can see it's smooth. The trouble is, I don't know why, even though it's smooth and the step's gone, there's still a line remaining. But I can assure you, it is smooth. Um, I mean, it could be the minute image can just make out there on the inside where the line was it might be a mini region with that I don't know and um, apart from this side here at the front towards the uh, point you can see that I've rubbed a bit too hard and there's a bit of a small channel nothing too major I'm just glad when I need to put the decals pretty much from there to about here that it's smooth and there's no step I'm really chuffed with the results not bad at all stay with me Right, work well, continues on my power boat. Now, I want to put a roof on the top of my power boat to make it look more like a racing boat. So basically, my son had bought himself some earphone headphones off the internet, and it came inside the box with this like clear plastic blister pack packaging, and had a nice big sheet. So that's the remnants of the sheet, and I've made myself a roof. Also, my son, as part of his gaming course, he made himself a trading card set. So he got this really thin card, as you can see. 
and he had a bit left. And measuring on, on my power belt where I want everything to go, I made a template. So in my template, I uh, stuck everything together with um, some normal household masking tape. And then I got my piece of flat um, blister pack. And then basically, drawed on my pencil, my roof. And then with my uh, Swan Morton knife, I scored very lightly. When I uh, put the pencil marks and started to fold it in one piece, as you can see, it worked out really well. The trouble is, I've had to cut out the center piece because the center piece um, it was too big. So basically, I've drawn some lines on me power about there on the on the main top part, and as you can see, that'll go on there eventually, and then that'll squeeze in. And then the center part, I'll have to measure it with my vernier. I picked this up for about three pound eighty five off uh, eBay, and then I'll put me two prong measuring prongs in there to get an exact measurement and then just whack it back in but uh, not a bad solution though with this uh, blister pack it's helped out really well because uh, my sheet card my sheet you know the uh, sheet that I use it was too thick and I couldn't get through it with my blocks one more knife and I actually blunted one of my blades so when my son was going to throw this away I thought I love this not bad at all stay with me Right, as you can see, I've now got my roof section on. Um, I had to use my industrial strength super glue uh, because I don't think the contactor would have cut it. So what I did is I got the super glue, ran it all the way down on the edge of the clear plastic. I also, um, once I put that aside on, I managed to get some um, on that on this lip here, managed to get some of that on there as well. I then glued some there, uh, put some of the glue there, and then using my tweezers to run it up and down and get it slightly inside as well. And then ran the super glue all the way out there as well on the bottom of the plastic and on the um, lip. I mean, it looks a bit messy as you can see. I mean, I'm obviously going to sand on the outside part. I mean, I'm not really bothered about the messiness on the inside because once this is all primed, you're not going to see it anyway. So that's my first section of roof done. Stay with me. It's work continues on my power belt. And as you can see, I've put the two rear sections of me scratch built roof on. So basically, um, I cut the out, cut it out, measured it, and cut it out, and um, with a card, couldn't get this angle right, but eventually I did, and then cut the the um, blister pack out, glued it to that lip, and glued it to that back edge there. Uh, once that dried, I then cut out a bit more of the uh, sheet, so it would go half on the front section, half on this rear section, and then made it a little strengthener. On the rear section. On this side, sorry, I should say, on the rear section. Even I used the same bit of cardboard, but it was slightly out. I think it's on this back edge. So what I did is I glued it to the lip, glued it there to about here. And then what I did is I made another little strengthener along with that one as well. And uh, it filled that little bit of a gap in, so all I've got to do is just uh, put a fill bit of filler in there. So that's that. Now for that front section here where I've got to put that extra bit of piece in what I've done is I've made a couple of strips out of me thin sheet plastic and then glued them to the inside so it brings this across so it gives that um, front section um, plate something to actually lean on because I don't trust the glue to hold it just on those edges and it, it's not too bad, I scored there and there with a the line so it would like bend slightly and then just glued that in. I've also done it on the rear section as well because I've measured my plate out I've obviously got to do a bit of fine trimming and that plate will go on there like so and then what I basically, same as the front section, I just measured it 
and then scored it on that line and then just uh, glued it to, to the little tabs on the inside and then this hook goes right across again giving that something to lean on because again I don't trust the edges just to hold that because I've got a feeling it's just going to pop out but even though I've only been working on this every so often pretty much when I can be asked the progress ain't going too bad stay with me Right, welcome back. Work continues on the power boat and as you can see with all the tape I've put the front section and rear section plates in now. With the front section um, the top edge went in really well, actually popped into place. Just put a bit of glue there around the edges and on the strengtheners and uh, the only problem is at the bottom it wanted to pop out so I'll just put a bit of tape into while the glue dries. On the back plate, again, round the edges on my two strengtheners at the back here and round here. But the only trouble is I'd, I'd cut it um, a bit wonky, as it were. The angle wouldn't meet it 100%. It was like a triangle shape there. So what I've done, what I've done from underneath, I've um, got a bit, got a little piece of the clear plastic, um, scored it, and then just uh, put it under underneath. You can see the two bits of tape holding that in. So when I fill that in, the actual filler will actually hold in. That bit of plastic will hold it in and it will fall into the interior. Right, now comes the um, hydrofall stroke thrusters, whatever you want to call them. I made them at an angle. made a little cardboard version. And as you see, that will go on the back there like that. So basically, I've done an edge that's 20, uh, two tens, and a 15. And then I've, there's one I've made earlier, as Blue Peter would say. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry on that. You can see I've measured it all out, but what I've done is I've, I've added an extra 5 mil. So when I fold all these on each other, it'll have a little gluing tab that'll go on the inside, and then that'll, that'll hold everything together. As you can see... You can probably just about make it out there. It's that little five mil section. These tweezers actually don't open unless you push them together. So I'll just put it wrapped a bit of tape around it and that tweezer holds all that in. So just waiting for that to dry and then I'll put this one together, fold it and uh, glue it all together and these will be ready to go onto the side of my uh, power boat. Stay with me. Right, uh, welcome back. As you can see, my two hydrofoils are one now, both sides. Basically, what I did is once I'd folded the second one and uh, glued it all together, I got this uh, couple of pieces of metal rods from work. Um, I think them drill guides, um, the drills have been stripped and these have just been thrown in the scrap. So I asked my boss if he could have them, he said it was fine. So I basically take them together and then feeding it through there, like so. And then I put a clamp there, and I put a clamp there, where my finger is, and just stirred so it rolled it into the side of my top section. Once dry, I, I just took the rod out, as I've just demonstrated, and then I've done it on the other one. Now, underneath here, there is a bit of a gap. It hasn't 100% met to the back here. So what I might have to do is I might have to just put a bit of filler in there, um, there's a little bit of a gap around the back here as well. Put a bit of filler in there, but it'll be fine. It's stuck perfect. So I can now um, start the front section here and then probably fill around the back there. And uh, let's see what happens. Stay with me. <laughs> 